Proverbs chapter 5. My son, again, my son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow down, and bow thy ear to my understanding. Chapter 4, verse 20. That thou mayest regard discretion, that thy lips may keep knowledge, speak right. For the lips, okay, here we, we've been, last time we talked about the evil man. Uh, let's see, yeah, the evil man and the way in the path of the wicked. We've been talking about people that we are to separate ourselves from. We started off in chapter one, you know, the, those who come to you and say, hey, let's go get in trouble. No, you not, you're not, those are people you're not to be with. And we go through the lessons that we've done so far to, to learn. Now we pick up in chapter 5, the lips of a strange woman. Strange for Solomon and the Old Testament that we're reading would be any woman that is not Jewish, first of all. Strange woman would be a woman that doesn't do what the law says to do if she was Jewish. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Sweet. Sweet words. And it's funny because it uses the word honeycomb and honey is a natural sweetener. She's imitating a natural woman in love of a man. Like Satan will imitate the Lord Jesus Christ as the Antichrist. She's not real. She's as a honeycomb, but not a honeycomb. Would be one of these, these artificial sweeteners you can get on the market. And by the way, those artificial sweeteners, some of them will do you more harm than they will good. Her mouth is smoother than oil. You gotta watch out for her. Her lips and her mouth are not right. They're wrong. And they'll be to get you in a trap. Now he's talking to her son, remember. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Wormwood. What does wormwood taste like? The Bible just told you, bitter. Now, I don't know if you, I've never had wormwood, but if you ever taste it, you know to realize at the end of this woman. Ugh, imagine what a bitter thing tastes. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Well, look at that. Not only is she like the natural sweetener, which she's not, She's an imitation. Her end is a two-edged sword, and the Bible says that is the word of God. The word of God will strike this woman at the great white throne judgment. That will be her end. When God will call her who she is, and her works and her books will be opened. Her feet go down to death. Down. Death. Is that where you want to go? How about if a woman came to a young man? Hi there, boy. You want to go to the mausoleum and have some fun? Huh? Would you want to lay in this coffin with me? what the Bible says. Isn't the Bible nice and clear? Isn't it just wonderful? That's not what she's going to say, but that's what the Bible speaks of her. Now, I'll make a comment at the end of this chapter, but I hope you're thinking about something about this book and the writer. So death, that's not where somewhere where you want to go. Her steps take hold on hell. Well, look at that. Matthew 12, 41 and Amos 9, 2. 
I have his references on that. And they have a note of Proverbs 7.27. First steps. She's going to lead you in a way away from God. Does that sound familiar? Least thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable. They're never the same. She's one way for one guy and another way for another guy. She may have to be drunk for one guy. She may have to be nice and sweet for another. She changes like a chameleon. You know, when you're home, she's, she's one, and when you're away, she's another. The first, the good, and the second for the bad. That thou canst not know them. Don't even try to figure it out. Don't even have anything to do with this woman, Solomon says. Then you only have to think about it. She's not the virtuous woman. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children. All right, well, now we've gone from son to children. And depart not from the words of my mouth. Listen to what I have to say. I, I started this off with wisdom and understanding and knowledge. I'm talking about a strange woman. Hear me. Stop giggling what, what I'm talking about. Listen. It's important. Remove thy way far from her. And come not nigh the door of her house. Don't go near. Now 4, 14, 15, we, we did the wicked and the evil. Now we're talking about the strange woman. We talked about the, 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 the path of the wicked and the way of the evil. We're talking about the door of the strange woman. She's not that woman that's on the street corner. I don't know if we already learned about it or we will come to it. You're going to her house. Samson is the perfect story. That guy was so fooled that three times in, in the house... That Delilah tried to have him taken, and he did it. <laughs> oh, that's cute little case we play. And he ended up with no strength, and uh, standing uh, in the little boy being mocked by his enemies, which caused his death. A woman. I'm sorry, there are women out there that, that have been planted by Satan that will destroy a man's life totally. And if you say, I do, you have to. And you can't kill her because that would be murder. That's what Solomon's saying. The decision you make about a woman, young man, is forever. Don't even go near her door. Don't bring her flowers. Don't bring her candy. Find someone else. Least thou give thy honor unto others. And thy years unto the cruel. Your character. And let me see a note I got here. The character, uh, well, your honor would be First Peter 1 7. I have the note. You see who that you see who that guy's dating? <laughs> you see who he's getting involved with? <laughs> wow, man. I give that guy a lot of credit, man. Give him five years and and, and it, 
his money will be gone or he'll be gone or some women have a perverse name given to them by their actions because of the way they live better watch out better watch out least strangers be filled with thy wealth the prodigal son found all kinds of women that talked smooth to him and he ended up broke And watch out for a woman that, that's interested in money. If a diamond is her girl, if they say diamonds are a woman or girl's best friend. If you're, if a woman you come across diamonds are her best friend, go find somebody else. If she can't settle for what you make, she's not the woman for you. Gifts for a wife are because you want to give, not because you have to. It's more appreciated to receive a gift from someone that loves you than you have to give her something. There's no fun in have to. It's it's that mo hey, I'm gonna get this and she'll be real happy and a loving wife will be you know, a gift even the most stupidest gift. I mean, you think as a man because you're stupid. You think it's the most loving gift. You know, an iron. And she's like, oh, I give the guy credit. He loves me, and I'll just put it with the other five he's bought. I mean, I know. Um, you know, when he when he a woman that wants something, you need to get away. And I think this is what she. I think this is what Solomon was talking about with her lips and all that. You know, I've heard the expression I don't, often, I don't know anybody in particular, but, you know, I've heard a mother will tell her children, you leave it to me, I'll work on your dad. That means mom will take dad into to the, the marriage bed and perform just so she can get his way, her way. That's wrong. That's a hooker. That's a whore. You may not give her money, but you're giving her something. No woman should use the marriage bed as a leverage. Matter of fact, the Bible in Corinthians forbids it. Okay. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. I don't understand. What your work would be in the house of a stranger. Working for somebody else, I don't know. Maybe you just, you got to work and work and work to please her. I don't know. And thou mourn at the last. There are many men out there. They cry in their beer because of who they got married to. You'll hear them on the job. That old lady of mine. That battle axe I, I married. That's wrong. And my opinion is, hey, listen, you said I do. Oh, she's changed. Okay, she may have changed, but come on. You may have had a little part in that yourself, you know. Thy f uh, and thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Possible disease? From the wrong woman? From death itself? Corruption. There are some women out there that will give you a disease that you wish you not had. I've seen some of the pictures of what those 
VDs, venereal diseases will do to you. Stay away. You don't have to worry about a, a, a virgin, clean woman with those things. But when the woman has taken a quite a few laps, you need to war you need to be very you need to very know that woman and say now this is the man saying how have I hated instruction God told me what I should done what my teachers had told me what you're going to done we're going to read about and my friend spoke to me and my dad spoke to me and I didn't listen and my heart despised reproof. It just went, oh, I just fell in love with her. You draw the little heart and I love you. 20, 25 years later and you want to spew. I guess. I've never been like that, so I don't know. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Of the law. This woman's got to be a, 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 a adulterous woman, or she's just out for no good and get your money and you know, get who you are. And I mean by an adulterous woman, I mean she's married, or she's been married around the block a few times. Well, we'll read about women like that in Proverbs. But before we're through. Nor incline my ear to them that instructed me. You know, just plain simple. Solomon, he did not listen to Solomon. It says in my book that it's, this is written 1000 BC. I don't know if it's true or that, somewhere, maybe somewhere around there. But how many years has Proverbs been in the King James Bible since 1611 at least how many people read that and as Christians have fallen to the wrong woman how many Christians have a Bible who didn't read it and fell into a woman they shouldn't marry that's why you gotta read your Bible there's instruction I remember one time as a little boy I asked my mom down in the basement she was doing the laundry this is crystal clear my mom was lost then and didn't know nothing. I just said, Mom, are there instructions that come? I, I think I asked somebody something like that. There, was there instructions that came when I was born or something like that? Are there instructions for people? Something like that along that ground. I remember she's telling me, this, no, there is none. Yes, there is. It's right here. I bet you if I give my mom a little time to answer that question, I bet you tell me to be the Bible today. Be great for for children to grow up in a house where, Dad, are there instructions that came with me when I was born? Yes, right here, go the Bible. You're to seek the Bible when you want to do something. You're to seek the Bible when you want to get marry somebody. You want to seek the Bible with a career. There's some medical things in here that you can seek the Bible. And if it's not in here medical, Jesus said, go to God first, and then go see a doctor. Pray about it. Don't go run into a doctor right away, and then don't go, well, I'm religious. I'm not ever going to see a doctor again. No, come on. Be right. The Bible is rules. Instruct me, verse 13. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and, and assembly. Almost in all evil. Sound like he pulled away. Now this is the guy that has gone after this woman. Congregation and assembly would be the Jews. You can pull from this woman. One day the light will come on and, and God work on your heart. To, no, that's not. There are a few women that I have been in, with in my lifetime. And, and I wonder if God didn't pull the plug on that. Calling me what my life would have ended up as.
You know, one is just just young and, and, and innocent, and another one just I don't know how to explain. It. Another one, Google eye. Ooh. I've been there. I was a man. I mean, I was a a, a teenager growing up as a male. Ooh. Yeah, if you would take a, a PET scan of my brain back then, you would saw a, a fog bang. That's every teenage man. It's red, it's fast, it's it's beautiful, it's sleek. It, uh... Yeah, you come home, you go, honey, I bought a brand new car. All right, look at that. It's only got two seats, dear. Yeah, it's got four on the floor, man. Uh, honey, we got you and me and two kids. Where are we going to strap the kids? Oh. It was red and it was fast. And you can do that with a woman. With, with, she's looking at, listen, this woman is like, a, is like a car salesman. You know? When you go in and you buy a bike that has flat tires and can't work. You didn't use no instruction. You didn't ask anybody. That's life. All right. Now, here's another woman. We looked at the strange woman. Now, here's the woman. Here is your wife. Drink waters out of thy own sister. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here. Don't compare. Don't you be married to a woman. Look at you know. Oh, look at that woman. Source of water. And Jesus met a woman at a well. Just happened to have five husbands. And issued the story of He is the living water. Isn't that interesting? And she went. In her life, and went and got the men in the city to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So your wife is to be a, a soul winner that has met Jesus Christ. I would assume. Your own sister. No, it doesn't say sisters. It says sister. One woman. Have you thought about somebody yet? Reading chapter five yet? Has somebody come into your head yet? And running waters out of thine own well. Don't envy. Don't you look at another woman. Oh, oh I wish my. No, no, that's wrong. Jesus said, Whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You don't need to be in her bed, you don't need to be naked. Jesus backed up Proverbs 5, verses 15. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. And the rivers of water in the streets. Listen, you, you can let her go out. You can let her have freedom. Let her go shopping. She better be trustworthy. Not the strange woman who's got, you know, the slick mouth that may go to someone else and talk to him and perfume your bed while you're away. Talk about her later. Take your wife out in the streets and she's my, put your arm around her. Hold her hand. Kiss her in the public. Talk about her nicely at work and to your, your friends. Let them be only thy own and not as strangers with thee. And I just saw something the other day on, on Facebook. These Christians, uh, I forget what the, whatever it is, I don't know. But they swamp wives. And husbands, and we're Christians, and God loves us. And you, just, you have not read Proverbs five seventeen. With the situation that arises here, when I asked Tracy to marry me, I asked her, "Listen." 
What is the condition? And there has been there was a failure in the marriage there. Scriptural bound. She's not with other men. She's not anywhere else. And not to be your wife. Let me ask you a question before we go further. We're going to be able to do this whole chapter. But I want to get this together. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Let me, how can I say this? Does a husband know his wife, her, her, his wife's boss? No. Particularly, no. He would not know the wife's boss. So in the eyes of the husband, if he doesn't know her boss, what would you call that boss? That's a stranger. When you put your wife out to work for somebody, you are handing your wife over to another man. That she has to be in submission to. Who does the Bible say she's to be in submission to? Listen, the Bible says that a wife leaves her family and submits or is supposed to submit to her husband. She doesn't even submit to her husband, I mean her father. Her husband has the overriding power of her father. What the husband says goes. No matter what father or whoever says. And even if it's wrong. And you send your wife out to work, work for another guy that she has to obey. And you violate what Paul says about a woman to be submission to her husband. And you violate what, what Solomon says, you know, to be strangers. Let thy fountain, and she's called a fountain, get a drink from her. Be blessed. Happy. Your wife is to be happy. Not you. Well, you're pretty happy, but I'm saying the wife. I'm talking about a, a man, you know, is just himself. That, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. The wife is to be happy too. Preferably both the husband and wife be happy together. Be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Marry at an early age. When she was beautiful. Jacob fell in love with Rachel because oh, hey, hey. I want her uh, seven years, yay! Seven more, yay! He didn't know that Rachel was an idolatrous. He didn't study that. In seven years, he didn't see that that Rachel liked idols. Fourteen years, he didn't see she liked idols. That was the first thing she took when it was time to leave Dad's house. Took his knick-knack patty wax, give the dog a bone. All right. Paul says in Corinthians that as far as the marriage bed, you're not to depart from it. Unless... You and your wife say, hey, we're going to fast this thing for prayer. And you can fast sex. But he says, you better get back to it before Satan steps in. Let her be as a loving hind in present row. There are some guys that go out in the woods to hunt Ryan and row. Because the Bible says in Proverbs, it's better to dwell in a wilderness. And then with your wife at home being contentious. It's in there. We're going to read that. There are some guys who rather go out in the woods be with a deer than be home with their deer. 
As much as you love to get that big rack on your wall, you're to love your wife. You're to outfit yourself as you would outfit yourself to hunt. Everything you need to go hunting. You should have everything you need to be to be a husband to that wife. You ought to look at her with beauty. Gracefulness. Now I've seen some women with this next one. They gasp and they have a heart attack. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Not just when it's dark. Now it's the 15th of the month. All times. It says... Her breasts. Not the internet. Not the beach. Not magazines. Her breasts. And I don't know, what would you say if, if you were going to be talking about multiple women? It would be their, okay, well, let, let their breasts. It doesn't say their breasts. Have you been thinking about somebody as we've been reading through this? And be thou ravished always with her love, Hebrews 13, 4. As you seek to make her happy and bless her, her goal in her life, the only man in her life is to be her husband and her and she is to be ravished you in love and it's not just sexual you got to know the man you marry what makes him happy you got to know the woman that, that you marry and make her happy Listen, if your wife is allergic to chocolate, it's because everybody buys their wife chocolate. You bring her chocolate, and that's not going to do you no good. Here, honey, have a box of chocolate so you can break out. Oh, look at you, girls, sleeping on a couch. Well, you moron, you didn't know what. I don't think she would even eat them. Let me. Honey, I just love you so much. Here's a here's a bouquet of cauliflower. Isn't it great? <laughs> and then for the wife, a wife that thinks of herself rather than her husband. You know what a husband and wife should do all the time. When one gets up, you need something? Would you like me to make you something? In our house, the key word is a slurpy burpee. Yeah, I should say the burpee. But hey, let's go, let's go out and get a slurpy burpee. As a whole fan, let's go. And we may not even be able to afford a slurpy burpee, but you know what? We're family. The Lord came back. We all got slurpy burpees in there. We're happy as a family. And let somebody worry about the credit card when we get home, ain't eh? you know? But we're happy. My wife likes to go out every once in a while, so I say, "Hey, I'm getting home for it. Let's go try to see the sunrise this morning. We'll get some coffee, we'll some, and she'll get whatever she wants. You know, we'll go to Seven Eleven. She gets what she wants. I don't tell you. You have to have coffee. You know? Oh, and we'll sit there." And there's sometimes I'm just oh, I'm sleepy, but I want to please her. I want to go out and please her a little bit. And why wilt thou now here we go, here we go, verse 20. Why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Now this is why I don't like to hug women. I mean, family, friend, you know, you go somewhere and there's just, there's always that woman that wants to hug everybody. Like, get away from me. 
I mean, if you're taller than me, my face don't belong in that area. Get, get away. I don't like it. I hate it. I don't even hug my own kids. I hug my wife, but I don't, I don't hug my kid. I just, ugh. That's why I don't do it. Both of them are stranger. I've known many people like that. I don't like it. But verse 20, whose name comes into mind? Why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, embrace the bosom of a stranger? And that Anne should, it's talking about the same woman, but in the story that I'm talking about, that Anne is another woman. There's two women. How many wives does Solomon have? And the Bible records to us that there were wives that he went after Balaam, he went after Moloch, he went after this God, he built... And he built these shrines for all these gods over the world. Solomon did not adhere to his own advice. Do you know what Rehoboam had to look, think his head reading chapter? I know it didn't say chapter five. He's reading this way, looking out, looking out his window like. My dad had so many women. I even sometimes even I forgot who my mom was. Solomon had a thousand women, and they were strange. The Bible records there was one from Egypt. You know what Solomon did with that Egyptian bride? Oh, baby, I just love you so much. But God says I'm not supposed to have you. So here's your own house. What? what? Solomon, duh! If you can't bring her in the city of your God, do. Now let me ask you a question: Did Solomon love the Lord? Didn't God give him a blank check and He said, "Listen, I want to know wisdom to guide my people." I'm not picking on Solomon. There's a reason. If Solomon fell for the lips of the strange woman, verse three. Now, don't you think you will not? There was a there was one woman in my life. Nothing ever happened. But she showed up twice in my life and ooh, I think she was destroyed me. Satan did one time around and didn't work, and then Satan did it twice around. Once when I was lost and once when I was saved. If Solomon fell and God spoke to him verbally, God speaks to us in print. There has been Bible believing, King James 6011 reading, and that's the word of God. There has been men that have fallen to this strange woman who probably may have even been in the church. See, she's not sent by God. She's sent by Satan, and Satan knows your weakness. And he'll send Miss Whoever to your door, that you'll stand at her door with flowers. You know, the best thing you should do, especially if the woman's in church, is you need to go, hopefully your pastor is a Bible-believing pastor and right in, in the Lord and not, I mean, I, some pastors today, I, I'm almost afraid to say what I'm going to say. Because some will lie to you, I'm sorry. But if you have a Bible-honoring, love Christ-centered pastor in your life, praise the Lord. You need to go to that pastor and say, Pastor, you watched me all these years, what is my character? And then what is what is your thoughts about that girl? Even before you show up to her door. Well say, I love I love a woman that's not in church. Uh ding dong ding dong the lights the fog I think they come on.
If she's not in church. She better have some aspect of trying to serve the Lord and do right. She may be in a bad church. But if she don't serve the Lord at all, what are you doing with her? What are you doing looking at her? See, there's some rules and regulations. Now, when I dated your mom, I took her to the pastor of my church. And we talked about her soul. And she asked the Lord to save her in the pastor's office. I was there. On the way home, I didn't want to tell her before. I didn't want her to get, you know, forcefully get saved to marry me, how wonderful I am. <clears throat> um, I told her on the way home, I said, if you had not got saved, our relationship would have been over this afternoon. I watched her. She passed out trash, she, she read her Bible, and she got saved. She wasn't in a church. But that, that, that's not something you go, I, I was, I could have been stupid. God blessed it. And only by the mercy and grace of God can I say that that turned out right. You have no business, Christian, man, young man, child, man, male species. You have no business to look at a woman who's not serving the Lord. You have no business, male species, to be in a church. And look after a woman when you have no aspect to serve the Lord. And you're just in church to find a nice Christian young lady. So you can ruin. See, the warning goes to the man, too. The protection of the woman. All right. Will thou, my son, be ravaged with a strange woman? Embrace the bosom of the stranger. Solomon fell. And if he can fall. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. 15.3 Behold the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Hebrews 4.13 And he pondereth his goings. Man's going. God looks at what you're doing. And according to Job 1 and 2, God may allow Satan to do that just to see what you Listen. He turned to Philip and said, Philip, we got 5,000 people here, don't we? Yeah, we do. What are we going to do? And the Bible records that Jesus asked him to see what he would do. That'd be messed up that, that God has allowed Satan to put somebody in your life for you to mess up your life. And God will do that if that's what you want. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. You hang your own rope with your own rope. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 12. You'll hang yourself. Solomon hung. Solomon ought to knew better. No better, knew better. And he fell. That prodigal son, the 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 young youthfulness of I've got money and all that, ended up trying to fight the pigs for the, the used corn and the cow. You know, once. 
some people will take you and use you up and they'll they'll throw you out just as much as garbage when they're done with you and they won't even thank you he shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray now there's hope for the prodigal son he picked himself up out of the muck and mire he said, I'm going to go back to God. Well, I'll, you know, I'll beat with this woman. I'll do all that. And I'll pick myself. Yeah, but what if children are involved? What about all the scars? What about all the injuries? You it's done. What about your character assassination? Verse 9, least thou give thy honor unto others. And that years unto the cruel. Come on, it's a sorry thing that most Baptist churches they like to talk. You know, in the Corinthian church that was carnal, there was a guy committing a sexual sin that was, and they enjoyed it. Hey, buddy, how you doing? All right. And Paul rebuked the church. All right, get out of here. You can't be in this church because you're doing this sin. The guy got right with God. You know what? Paul had to tell him, will you, will you bring him back? Will you treat him as a brother? Man, you had more fellowship with that guy when he's in sin than he and Now he's right with God. If there's one thing we are up to five chapters of Proverbs is, there is a separated life. I am not against anybody who's other than me that's white. I am not prejudiced. I have some good black friends. There's two black men that I work with, and we, we get along well. And, and the other night, I went up to him. I said, we have this job to do. I said, do you want this side or do you want that side? He says, let me do this because I don't like that. I said, that's fine with me. I'll do it. And we work together. But black people are to be with black people. They're happier. Listen, when they come into our house, we have that smells just as bad as we, when we go into their house. I've been in the ghettos. God has caused a division among the people. When you take a life on as, as in marriage of a husband and wife, you two are now the main example. It ain't your parents no more. Now, you can go to your parents for advice. But father does not rule that house. And little girl, if, if you marry this guy, you better realize that's for life. And that's the one makes your decisions no more. It's not daddy. Man, if you marry that woman, that is for life. And if she turns your life miserable, you said I do. It takes two to tangle. There's a reason why she's miserable. And if she's miserable because it makes your life miserable because that, that was her character all along, you didn't check her out long enough. And there are people like the, the evil man and the wicked man and the strange woman and those that say, come on, let's go get in trouble. As you go back and read and the audio and, and the videos of, of the first four chapters of the prophet, there are people that God has told you, stay away from them. They will ruin your life. They will ruin your walk with me. And if you walk with them, I will stop walking with you. You got to get that. Whoever they are. There may be a time in your church where your pastor commits a sin or turns and, and, and gets another Bible that you need to say, Pastor, I'm not following in this church no more. There may be time you got to tell a child, hey, you're going to live like that. You need to go. It may be. And it's hard. But 
But we are giving warning. And even the greatest men, David, Samson, Solomon, and Paul was a sinner, and Peter was a sinner, and James was a sinner, and Noah sinned. Even the greatest men fell. And you know how stupid they fall? The Bible says Noah planted a vineyard and got drunk. Wow, I got some old wine over here. I better finish it up before it gets old and in and, and, and bed. Uh, what's wrong with this stuff? <laughs> old grapes got him in trouble. A wife of Adam, his wife, here, dear, eat this. One mistake. One sin. One wrong decision. And it can ruin your character for life. One guy on a battlefield. Yeah, I'm G.I. Joe. Look at me fling these grenades. And one grenade go off and... How'd you lose your arm? That was stupid. What what's that thing in your throat? I just smoke. Simple as that. Sin is a snake. It will bite. And it has deadly vermin. Or venom. Not vermin. Venom. 